We're now going to demonstrate how to install a basin monoblock mixer. Most basin mixers come supplied with threaded posts which form part of the clamping set and allow the mixer to be secured to the basin. Before you do this though, it's best to fit the flexible supply pipes to the basin mixer. They should be screwed into the holes so that they are hand tight. Make sure you're not over tightening them as this can damage the o-ring that is there to make a water seal between the tap and the pipe. Once both the flexible pipes are secured into the tap, the tap is almost ready to be secured to the basin. However, if the tap is supplied with a pop-up waist, we suggest that the vertical rod should be located into the pop-up waist hole at the back of the tap prior to the tap being secured to the basin. This is done either by sliding the rod from above through the hole or in some instances the knob will need to be unscrewed, then slid up from the underside of the tap and the knob secured onto the thread once the rod is in position. Some basin mixers come supplied with a base ring and some don't. Ordinarily on the base ring there is a slight instep which would locate onto the underside of the tap. Make sure the correct side of the base ring is offered up to the base of the tap. The base ring is then carefully located and make sure it's secure by wobbling it from side to side. Once the base ring is in place you need to fix the basin mixer to the basin. Carefully feed the flexible connection tubes through the hole in the basin followed by the pop-up rod and the clamping set threads. Now it's time to fit the rubber washer and the rest of the clamping set to secure the mixer to the basin. Firstly the rubber horseshoe washer is located onto the threaded posts like this and pushed up to meet the underside of the basin. The brass horseshoe washer goes on in the same way. Before putting the nuts on make sure there's no obstruction or interference with the flexible tails or the pop-up rod. Then screw the nuts into position and tighten up by hand. Once you've tightened the nuts up as much as possible by hand, use an adjustable spanner to finally tighten them fully up to the basin. Again, avoid over tightening them as this could cause the basin to break. Once there is some resistance, check the basin mixer does not rotate on the basin and if it doesn't then it's tight enough. If the tap is supplied with a pop-up waste, it's advisable that this is fitted prior to the basin being mounted on the wall as per the instructions supplied with the tap. The pop-up waste is adjusted by locating the connection block in a position which allows the mechanism to work so that the plug can move up and down when the lever is operated at the back of the tap. In this instance illustrated here the horizontal pop-up rod is too long as they are supplied for various installations. Work out how long the horizontal rod has to be to meet the vertical rod coming out of the basin mixer and then cut to size with a hacksaw at this point here. The horizontal rod has now been cut to size so that it will not interfere with the wall. Finally the spring clip that is supplied with the mechanism needs to be located on the horizontal rod closest to the waist and then is attached to the end of the rod like this to ensure the mechanism stays secure once installed. We're now ready to connect the pipework to the tap via the flexible tap connectors. As water bylaws state, there needs to be a service valve at the closest appropriate point to the fitting to allow servicing of the product. This is a typical service valve which is attached to the copper pipe which will be the water supply. This is simply connected by turning the fitting clockwise by hand and then tightening to a watertight seal using an adjustable spanner. This is repeated on the cold side in exactly the same way. Once both hoses are fitted, turn the water supply on to check for any leaks. We're now going to demonstrate the operation of the tap. To turn the tap on, you lift the lever up, turn it to the right for cold or to the left for hot. This tap is installed with a low pressure aerator. This means that when the tap is turned fully on with a high pressure feed, the water may spray over the front of the basin. So in high pressure situations this can be remedied by exchanging the aerator. Supplied in the tap packaging is a high pressure aerator. Unscrew the standard low pressure aerator and take out the rubber washer. 
relocate the washer into the high pressure aerator and install it by turning it clockwise into the spout of the tap, tightening it by hand and then carefully finishing off the installation with an adjustable spanner. This should then prevent any water from spraying over the basin and give a more consistent flow in a high pressure situation. We're now going to demonstrate how to change the cartridge. First, it's important to turn the water supply off at the most appropriate point. In this case, it's with the service valves located under the basin. These must be turned off, like this, and then double check there's no water coming out of the product whilst the tap is turned on. Once the water has been turned off, the handle needs to be removed. In this case, this is done by lifting the lever up, removing the small decorative cap, and using an Allen key to remove the handle. Once released, take the handle off the spline of the tap and put it in a safe place. The threaded chrome cap then unscrews anti-clockwise, and next the brass nut which secures the cartridge into the body of the tap needs to be removed. Loosen the nut using a spanner and turning it anti-clockwise, being careful to avoid scratching the tap or the wall. Once loosened, remove the nut by hand. This reveals the cartridge and allows the cartridge to be gently persuaded out of the tap body. Once the cartridge has been removed, it's always advisable to turn the tap on from the feed just to flush through any foreign bodies or debris that may have built up in the tap over a period of time. To fit a replacement cartridge, there are two lugs on the bottom of the cartridge which need to be located into two ports that are drilled into the base of the seating of the tap. These are clearly evident when you look down into the tap. They are at the rear of the mixer. The brass back nut needs to be located and hand tightened clockwise. Then tighten with a spanner, taking care not to damage the chrome surface of the tap. It needs about three quarters of a full turn to get it into its position. Over tightening will either damage the cartridge or twist the tap past its centre position, so take extra care. The threaded chrome cap is then screwed back into position, the handle is located onto the spline of the tap, and the Allen key is used to secure the handle into position. Finally, the small decorative cap needs to go back on the handle of the tap. Finally, turn the water supply back on and check for any leaks. The servicing of the tap is now complete.